If you study criminology, it would simply imply that you are interested in the minds of criminals, their motives, and the victims. You typically aim to be on the good side of the law. But what if I told you there is a man who studied criminology and end up being on his country's most wanted list? A man who is interestingly enough, also a good friend of none other than Bola Yos, who is also on the most wanted list. This man is vicious, smart, and never takes no for an answer. This is the story of Flor Brechers, Belgium's number one target. Flor Brechers, also known as De Lange, which means the tall one, was born in 1987. His criminal career starts in 2009 when he is 22 years old. The timing is very interesting because he just finished a master's in criminology. Isn't that ironic? A recently graduated criminology student who, after finishing his study, becomes a criminal himself. Did he choose the study to learn how the police thinks in order to use it against them in later life? Well, maybe. Nonetheless, it is fair to say that Flor Brechers is a smart guy. This makes it even more fascinating as to why he chose the career path of a criminal instead of staying on the good side of the law. His life before what happened in 2009 is unclear. He was a small-time drug dealer, but nothing more than that. Most signs pointed towards that Flor had a stable and good upbringing, and life of crime was not the most obvious choice. Well, in 2009, Flor and two others commit an armed robbery on a small restaurant in Lommel, Belgium. They were immediately excessively aggressive and upon entry immediately left off a shot. The waiters that were present were pushed and were demanded to lie low. Another employee behind the cash register was forced to empty the cash register and give the money to one of the robbers. The loot would amount to a measly 6,000 euros. The loot was not impressing and to make matters worse, the group was quickly apprehended only a few days later. So much for Flaw's expertise in criminology. I expected him to go after a target more worthwhile, and at least stay out of the hands of police much longer than he did here, considering his masters in criminology. In court, Flaw later says that he is ashamed of his actions. He goes on to say, every time I pass the restaurant, I feel guilty. I will take this with me for the rest of my life. I am doing good now. I have a job and I stay out of any sort of criminality. Police also found the weapon that was fired in Flaw's possession. When asked why he had a gun, he said it was to protect himself because he was threatened some time prior. Just a year later, it is already clear that Flaw absolutely had not left the underworld and that everything he told in court was a lie. It's the 18th of August, 2010, when a Dutch man is walking his dog in the Belgium city of Overbelt. As he is calmly walking, all of a sudden, two men with masks hop out of their Volkswagen. The two men proceed to push him into their car and drive towards the forest of Berkeit in the Netherlands. What happens next is unbelievable and shows why Flor had another nickname besides the tall one. As they push the man out of the car, they get into a physical altercation. Then one of the kidnappers sits down on him and pulls out a pruning shears. The kidnapper grabs the man's hands and I think you can imagine what happened next. This event is the reason that Flor Brechers is also known as the finger cutter. The man supposedly snitched on Flor in a big narcotics case, so this man had to be learned a lesson. It showed how ruthless Flor was. He dealt with his problems in a preposterous manner. But once again, the criminology student is arrested relatively short after what happens due to DNA samples on tie wraps and the masks they left behind on the scene in the forest. Flor does get a lucky break. There is not enough evidence to prosecute him for either giving the order or actually committing the crimes himself. He walks away free, but his name would now be tied to the underworld forever. Police later said that Flor is a highly intelligent man who is very dangerous and likes to deal with things violently. They were convinced that they would have to deal with him again sooner rather than later. Well, they were entirely right about this. Fast forward to the 13th of November 2013, Johannes W, a Dutch truck diver and flower merchant, is arrested in Letchworth, England. During a routine traffic stop, Johannes W acted suspicious according to the police. This led to the police conducting a search in Johannes' truck and his load. Unfortunately for him, 
the officers found out he was not just carrying flowers, but also 40 kilograms of pure narcotics, with an estimated worth of 13 million euros. The shipment got seized and Johannes was sent to jail. The prosecutors initially demanded a 17-year-long jail sentence. Luckily for Johannes, after two years, the St. Albans Crown Court ruled that the evidence for the fact that Johannes was willingly involved in the smuggling was insufficient. He was released and returned to the Netherlands. Him being released was not the end of the story. Losing 13 million euros worth of goods is obviously an awfully costly matter. In the underworld, this immediately means one thing, repercussions. Just a few days after his release, Johannes is taken to a home in Berlin, Belgium, on the 12th of February 2016. This was later revealed to be a home of Belgian kickboxer and criminal Korn van S. The terrified Johannes immediately got beat and threatened by five men. The message is simple, pay back the lost shipment. Johannes offers 40,000 euros he has stashed at home. One of the men pick up the money from his home and Johannes is released a day later. They agreed to settle the rest of the payment a week later on the 19th of February. Once the 19th of February came, Johannes still did not pay the money back. As Johannes is driving in his truck, he noticed an Audi behind him. None other than Cohen van S was driving that Audi. Johannes W immediately phoned the police and Cohen was arrested. Upon further inspection, they arrested another five men. In court, it all starts to unfold. The men were working for none other than Floor Brescher's. He initiated the kidnapping and demanded them to get his money back from Johannes. In 2018, it is time for all of those involved to face the judge. Flor Brechers, who was not jailed yet for his involvement, was sentenced to four years in prison. Before police could arrest him, he already fled and was now living life on the run. As years go by, Flor's name starts popping up more and more in cases related to drug smuggling on a large scale. Flor is done with the robberies and small-time drug dealing. He has entered the big leagues. What might have propelled his career was his relationship with the daughter of Peter S, a well-known Dutch criminal. It's highly likely that his relationship gave him some good connections in the underworld. One of those connections is quite fascinating. None other than Jos Leidekers, also known as Bolle Jos, currently the Netherlands' most wanted criminal. Jos is tied to the disappearance of the godmother of Coke, Neymar Jalau, and several other shocking cases. They have just increased the bounty on his head from 75,000 euros to 200,000 euros on March 14th, 2023. Floor and Jos were close companions and often worked together to smuggle large shipments. If you have been watching any crime-related documentaries in the past few months, you will know about the hacked PGP encrypted messaging servers. After analyzing the millions of messages, Floor Brescher's name was among those who could be tied to large-scale drug smuggling he obviously did not send those messages with his own name. He used an alias. The alias he was using was Bongo King. This Bongo King was, according to the messages, the head of an organization smuggling tons of coke to the ports of Antwerp and Rotterdam. Once, 3,200 kilos were seized in the port of Rotterdam. Messages revealed this was a shipment of flour. He said to be absolutely gutted by the seizure. He went on to say, well, it was bound to happen sooner or later. We actually had a good run though. His name would pop up once again in an investigation into large-scale smuggling from Suriname. Belgian police received an anonymous tip in 2018 that Floor was involved, and it was a very lucrative route. Floor would ship his coke in the containers of a Surinamese rice trader called Nitenda Omrausing. Remember this name. In 2018, a shipment of 800 kilos entered the port of Antwerp. The 800 kilos were hidden between the bags of rice in the container. The supposed buyer of the rice was a company in Moldova. Everything went smooth, and Floor thought he succeeded to bring home another big shipment and therefore a large sum of money. But there's something he did not know. Customs and police intentionally let the shipment through. Why? to get a better vision on the organization behind the shipment. Fast forward a year later to the 14th of January, police in Guyana find a lifeless man on a small beach. All it took was one to the head. After conducting an investigation, they traced the man back, being from Suriname. I can already hear you thinking, Nitenda, 
the rice trader, was also from Suriname. Well, you are right. After further investigation in Suriname, it was indeed Nintendo Omrao Singh. He and his rice trading business popped up in several smuggling investigations. However, it could not be determined for sure whether he had something to do with it or criminals just use his containers without his knowledge. The last option is less likely. Because why would anyone be after him if that was the case? It is more likely that Nintendo was called to give an explanation for the missing shipments. The 800 kilo shipment was not only one that went missing, an even bigger shipment of 2,345 kilos did not make it either. In fact, this shipment did not even manage to leave the port of Suriname. This was the biggest seizure in the entire history of Suriname. Right before Nintendo would be questioned about this by police in Suriname, his life was ended. It's obvious someone did not want him to talk to the police, but who could that be? In May 2021 would be the time when Flor Brechers is officially put on the list of most wanted criminals in Belgium. By this time, he has been smuggling tons of coke, is linked to several brutal acts, and only seems to become a bigger figure in the underworld. One of the biggest motives to put him on the list was because of the increasingly violent acts he would commit. Belgian police wanted to stop him as soon as possible. The encrypted messages database that was hacked showed how big Bongo King truly was. Upon further inspection of these messages, he could be traced back to Zurich, Switzerland. Which was an interesting place because most criminals have all been apprehended in Dubai in the past years. In February 2022, 35-year-old Flor Brechers is officially arrested after months of intense efforts to find him. He lived in a luxurious apartment in Zurich, together with his girlfriend and kid. Flor did not put up a fight and immediately gave himself up when the police knocked down his door. According to the reports, he seemed relatively calm and unimpressed. It could be a sign that he knew it was coming, and it was only a matter of time until he had to accept his faith. After his arrest in February, Flor had to wait until he was extradited to Belgium. He had his lawyers fight this extradition. The arguments were that the Belgian jails are too full and chaotic. The judge obviously did not care for those arguments and still had him extradited to Belgium. He was sent in a private plane with heavily armed guards to a Belgian airport. At the airport, there was a helicopter waiting for him to bring him to an undisclosed prison. His girlfriend, who was in the apartment with Flor Brechers as well, was initially let go. But as she traveled back from Switzerland to the Netherlands sometime later, she was apprehended at the airport. She stayed in jail for over a month as police suspected her to be a part of her boyfriend's organizations and helped him to launder money. She was later released, yet still remains a suspect in some cases regarding her boyfriend's organization. This was the story of Flor Brechers, a criminology student who became a criminal himself. He quickly made a name for himself in the underworld and did not shy away from using harsh tactics to get his way. His intelligence and eagerness made him a lot of money. However, unfortunately for him, he still ended up behind bars at just 35 years old. Thank you for watching, and as always, leave a like, comment, and please subscribe.